In today's video, we are going to take a look at a semi-new model released by Maxace. So it is the Raccoon Dog. Uh, quite, you know, quite a name for a, a knife, right? So I have three different versions. The knife is available in three different versions, but I actually also released a separate scale that you could buy in a material called Ultem, I think. It's like a transparent yellow color, sort of like a G10 material, I believe. Uh, I did not get those separate scales because, well, I don't think they are super good looking and I, I wanted, you know, these, these three versions. Uh, I could, of course, have gotten a extra and just bought those old time scales and put on to have like four different versions, but these are the three standard ones. And what we have here is two knives that are in CPM S90V steel and one that is in RWL34. So I do think it's kind of interesting that they actually went with uh, two different types of steel for the very same uh, model. Uh, and there will be some uh, other difference, just in the steel of course, and that's going to be the, uh, the scales of the knives. So uh, I think we should start with sort of an unboxing of each individual knife, and then I will just pick one of them to go over the, you know, the, the general design, the ergos, the specifications, uh, etc. So uh, let's start by doing an unboxing. I think we can start with the RW34 uh, steel, which is this one. Let's put the others aside. So this is the RWL34 version with the whole handle. Uh, the other ones will have different handle scales. So um, let's do a bit of an unboxing here. Well, this doesn't say a whole lot, just a piece of paper. Then we got um, the pouch with the knife. There's also some additional content here, perhaps. So, um, yeah, some, some paperwork, uh, precautions, our persistence, contact us. Yeah, and then you got the same stuff in Chinese for those that prefer that. So just some random paperwork. Put that aside. Then we open up the pouch, the yeah, typical pouch, Maxis and Midnight Cat Studio. Guess it is the same company, right? Inside we have some uh, silica gel, got a piece of cloth. Got some, yeah, raccoon dog product parameter. Some info about the model. Uh, we got, yeah, we got all the specifications, overall length, handle length, blade length, blade thickness, weight material, etc. This is interesting, it says blade material, CPM S90V slash RWL34 slash Damascus. I have not seen a Damascus version of the Raccoon Dog, but maybe that is something we will see in the future if we are to believe this uh, this card. Interesting. So, um, no spare hardware or anything. Pouch aside. Then we got the knife itself. So let's take a look at that. So this is what the whole handle scales look like. Got a Max Ace logo here on the clip. I don't really like that and it's it's etched in like more than just you know writing, it's actually etched into the uh, into the pocket clip and I guess that's kind of a nice touch but uh, not, not the biggest fan of, you know, the branding. Uh, but yeah. Whole version. 
And this is what the map looks like uh, unfolded. So RWL34 holes handle. And you can see there is some nice polishing inside of these holes. It's actually a nice, quite a nice touch. Everything is going in great tones here, so no coloring uh, whatsoever. So let's uh, let's open up the other versions as well, so we can take a, a better look at them. So next up we have the let's see smooth handle CPM S90V steel. So let's take a look at that one. I'm not going to spend too much time here with the contents because it's going to be exactly identical. So um, let's just grab the knife. So this is the smooth handle. No, I mean no, um, no texturing, no holes. More of a uh, stonewashed, polished uh, look to it. I would say could be a fingerprint magnet, perhaps. Um, got a is it a light, light, light blue uh, pivot color here? So a little bit of a color touch, and we also got yeah. Blue, uh, blue pocket clip and a blue backspacer. Very, you know, like clean look to it. Uh, it may look kind of simple. I mean, this hasn't a, a really complex look either. But there is, you know, some stuff going on here, some small, you know, I mean, despite it being no colors, there's still, I mean, the holes do make a difference. Oops, let's see, so we can get them both like this. Yeah. So let's uh, take a look at it uh, unfolded. Really, yeah, really clean look to it. And once again, the Max Ace logo is etched there on the pocket clip. It looks sort of, yeah, it is a metallic gray color. It looks sort of jello at first, but it is actually uh, just gray color. Are the blade finishes the same on these two? Let's take a look. Uh, more or less identical blade finishes. So this is the smooth handle. Let's take a look at uh, the third and final version. The final version is a stone pattern handle and S90V blade. So uh, let's take a look here. So Quite a bit different from what we just saw with a super smooth handle. This one has a very rocky texture, but kind of, you know, smooth in, in a way. I mean, deep, semi-deep sculpting, but nice to the touch. And the same on the back side here, on the onshore side, the clip side there. Features the same kind of, you know, deep 
stone sculpting. Very nice contrast to the super smooth polished blade. So let's uh, flick it open and take a look at it unfolded. So which one you like the most of, of these three will of course be you know pure personal preferences. Um, I guess one factor uh, that will weigh in is of course whether you want a knife with a CPM S90V blade or RWL34 blade. Both of them really good steels however so I mean it's not like you you're really you know downgrading uh, picking either one. Or you do like me and just buy all three but uh, could be a bit overkill. So, stone pattern, smooth handle, the only version with some color to it, with a pivot color here and the pocket clip, as well as the backspacer. And then the holes version with the RWL34 steel. Those are the three available versions of the Raccoon Dog. And then you can get yourself a uh, Ultem scale if you want to and put on yourself. So with this out of the way sort of we can start to focus a bit more on the actual um, specs, ergos and overall uh, design of the knife. Before we proceed to doing some sharpness testing and uh, you know final thoughts and conclusions etc, I just want to throw the, the raccoon dog up against two of my other uh, Max Ace knives that I have with me here. Uh, and one of those are actually one of my all time favorites from Max Ace and that is the Punchy. I think this was made in a quite limited number. Uh, but I'm not sure how many were made, I hope to see a comeback of this one. Uh, so this one will share a few similarities with the Raccoon Dog, uh, but obviously there are quite a few differences as well, as can be seen. Let's take the Raccoon Dog here. So I mean in terms of, you know, size range and general design, when, when not folded at least, uh, obviously this is, as we mentioned before, a front flipper. This one uses thumb studs to, to open up, but they will share some similarities once we unfold them. But I also brought with me here to the table the Samurai 2.0 which is also in sort of the same size range, shares a few uh, design similarities both in handle style and in, um, in blade design as well. Uh, but also a few differences of course. But let's go with the punch first here. So. This here is the Punchy. It is a really, really good looking knife. It got some really nice grind lines to it as well. Uh, the most complex grind lines compared to the Maxi Samurai 2.0 and the Raccoon Dog as well. I love this knife. It is, it is fantastic. There's nothing I dislike about it. Perhaps I would have preferred it to be a frame lock uh, rather than a liner lock, but as uh, a minor thing. Super, super smooth action as well. There is nothing I dislike about his knife. So let's uh, pair it up here with the uh, Raccoon Dog. I'm gonna go with, uh, with the one with holes here, the RWL34 version. So 
not as complex grind lines on this one. Uh, but I still wanted to, you know, show them to talk about, you know, or not talk about, but just show, you know, some of the, the similarities of sorts. Uh, I mean, the puncher is a wider blade, it's compound grind, tanto-ish, but it's still, you know, to me, they are in the same, like, general category of knives. So that is why I thought it would be interesting to, to show them a little bit and, you know, do a minor comparison uh, of sorts. And while the Raccoon Dog Air is a very nice knife, uh, it does not dethrone the Punchy. But I really appreciate them doing a design like this. So let's do a quick comparison with the uh, Samurai 2.0. So this is the Samurai 2.0. I don't think I made a review of this one yet, which is, well, something I need to do, obviously. Brown micarta, or green micarta, but it's definitely more brown than green. Um, as you can see right away, it too shares a bit of uh, similarities with the raccoon uh, dog as well. Bit different, you know, width of blade, etc. But definitely some, some design similarities, and I think that they are, you know, to be paired in the same kind of category or league of sorts. So I just wanted to throw it out here for those uh, who might find a comparison like this to be of interest. Yeah. As you may or may not hear, it has started to rain a little. I hope you will find that sound to be well, kind of soothing, or at the very least, not, you know, too annoying or distracting. Anyways, it's time now to do some, um, some number talk and uh, design talk, etc. But I'm gonna start off by checking each knife a little bit in terms of, you know, general fit and finish and, you know, just quality overall, now that we have three of the same model, so to say. Uh, I mean, just by looking at the knife here and, you know, feel, etc. Uh, I will say that the fit and finish of this one is kind of, you know, kind of on point. Uh, but let's let's check the, you know, like centering, for example. And we can see that it's, in my opinion, actually not perfectly centered. I think it favors the clip side by just a little bit. Let me take a look here. Yeah, I'm super nitpicky, but I think that it favors the, the clip side just a little. In terms of opening and closing action, it clips open really nicely and fast. Um, and in terms of, yeah, let's check for blade play. So there's no blade play. Lockup, lockup I would say is around 25% something like that which is it's really nice 25 30 i generally prefer a, a early uh, lockup there's no lock stick and the blade shuts close nicely so overall i think that uh, the fit and finish of this specific one is quite nice if only they could have you know gotten the centering spot on it would have been more or less perfect let's take a look at another one So here we have the fingerprint magnet, the polished smooth version, uh, does look quite nicely, you know, just, you know, looking and feeling, I think that the, the finish is, is nice. In terms of uh, centering, yeah, this one is in fact 100% centered. It does not favor one side more than another. Perfectly centered. Very nice. Let's open it up. Smooth opening action. There is no blade play. We've got a lockup that is slightly earlier than on the one we just took a look at. Uh, so I probably favor this one even more in terms of lockup. This is more like 20-ish percent compared to the 2530 on the other one. No lock stick and it closes very nicely. 
this one is yeah hydraulic drop shot very nice but it is a fingerprint magnet next up we have the stone pattern version which both looks and feels great i like that it's actually you know uh, some, some deep sculpting here and the snow not sharp in any way, I mean deep and smooth. That's a really good look to it. So, op uh, wait, not opening action. Let's check the centering. So, the centering here is spot on. It is 100% centered. Which is very nice to see. So we got two with perfect centering and one with almost perfect centering at least. So let's try the opening action here now. Flips open nicely. No blade play, and the lockup of this one is perhaps even earlier than the other one. I'd say the lockup here is, uh, I'm gonna say like 20% as well. Maybe the other one was 25% after all. But nice early lockup. There is no lock stick. And the action, closing action is, yeah, like the other one, more or less hydraulic. So, I mean, overall, I think they did a good job with all three. Uh, they would have all been perfect if only the centering on this one would have been 100%. Now it is like 95% centered. Yes, I am nitpicky, but it is, it is what it is. So, uh, overall, I think... The, the quality here is is on point and I mean especially for for the price these knives aren't you know super expensive um, to begin with but let's crunch some numbers now and I'm gonna go with smooth one for the specs I think so let's uh, crunch some numbers then shall we starting off with the overall length here so the overall length is 210 millimeters, 21 centimeters in total length. That makes this knife, you know, like a medium sized knife, I'd say. Um, definitely not small, but also definitely not uh, one of the larger knives here on the channel. We've got a blade length here of 90 millimeters, so 9 centimeters in blade length. We've got a close length, I guess counting from this then to here of 120 millimeters so 12 centimeters close length we've got a blade thickness here of four millimeters so it's a fairly you know stout blade i've already mentioned this several times but this blade is in cpm s 90 v but you can also get it in rwl 34 titanium scales or Ultem scales if you would like to buy separate scales for your knife. Uh, the weight of this one is specified to 136 grams. I'm not sure if there is lots of you know, differences between them depending on I mean if you drill some holes in it etc. But uh, the difference in weight should be marginal uh, I'd reckon. Uh, the balance point of this one is here at the finger groove. Uh, not a bad place to have your balance point. Let's see if there's an internal milling. Yeah, there is actually quite a bit of internal milling here. Uh, on the shove side we have a ton of internal milling. It is not easy to catch that on camera, we all know that by now. But there is quite a bit of internal milling on that side and on the clip side there is a bit of yeah, here we can see the internal milling on the shop side. Let's do like this and we can perhaps see some of the milling. There's not a lot, but there's a bit of milling here on the clip side as well. So they did, uh, they did try to balance it out a bit, which is uh, of course nice, I think. Uh, it's always nice with a, with a you know, well-balanced knife in general. Already mentioned, it is a frame lock, of course, and a front flipper at that. Let's see, torque screws, yeah, uh, backspacer, 
Maybe it's a good thing I took this one, so we can see the, the backspacer is on the kind of you know, smaller side here, but we do have this blue backspacer. The other backspacers on the other knives were non-colored. Uh, so, pocket clip. I'd say this is like a semi-deep carry pocket clip. Uh, nothing super fancy. I'm not a fan of the uh, the Maxis logo on the pocket clip. Uh, in my opinion, they can remove that in the future. If they are watching this video, it is one of my uh, well requests and because branding on the pocket clip to me looks well, it's, it doesn't look super nice. Uh, and I mean, it will be some wear wear wearing to it. But then again, I mean, it's not just printed on, it's actually etched on here. So it won't fade completely, uh, I reckon. So blade here is sort of a Japanese Tanto style. Um, got a bit of a hollow ground here going up in a... It's, let's see if you can get the actual grind line to be visible here. But you do have this thicker grind here on the top part. Got some jimping here. Not really, you know... That aggressive at all more like well not really functional in my opinion could have gone a bit further up here as well it's too far back to really you know get some good use of it uh, got this swedge thing going on here and the tip I would say the tip of the knife is actually a fairly uh, fairly stout mm. tip here I'd say I do like the you know the aesthetics of this knife both in terms of handle and uh, and blade. In terms of ergos, fairly large size hand, size 10 in gloves, placing the knife like this. So we do have a lot of room. I mean, it is quite a comfortable knife in my opinion. It is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a non-complicated handle of sorts. And that is something I appreciate from time to time. So I think this one will fit most people's hands. In a reverse grip, it feels good in a reverse grip as well, should you uh, want to utilize the knife in a grip like this, for whatever reason you may have to do that. But uh, yeah, grind lines are nice, but like I mentioned before here, when we did a comparison with, uh, with the Punchy, this one does have a bit more, you know, uh, in my opinion, sophisticated and aggressive uh, grind lines. The grind lines here of the Raccoon Dog uh, does have more, in my opinion, in common with, uh, with the Max Ace Samurai 2.0 without you know, being uh, identical uh, blade designs, but they do share more similarities in, in some sense. At least in, in looks like this, because the Samurai 2 here is not a compound grind actually. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, well, I might take that back on second thought. Uh, let's just say that, you know, the, the Maxis Samurai 2.0 is, you know, the most budget-friendly option here, uh, with the least complex grind. This one actually does have some, some more complexity to the grind compared to it. So I would say that this is, you know, in the middle, with the punch chip being on top, then we got this one, and then we got the Samurai 2.0. And that also reflects in terms of pricing, of course. Uh, so, uh, what more can we say here? We've gone over the numbers, we've gone over the, the ergos, and the overall design. So I think that's it for this segment. I think it's actually time to, to try out the, the factory sharpness now. So let's, let's do a bit of slicing. So, time for some uh, factory sharpness testing. We're gonna go with regular printing paper and very thin uh, newspaper. And we're gonna start with the regular printing paper, as I always do. And then we're gonna pick one of the knives to, to go with. We're gonna go with the, with the smooth one here. So I've come to expect really, really amazing sharpness from Maxis, uh, so I sure hope that this knife can uh, deliver on that. Okay, so... Um, 
I'm not actually, you know, really blown away by this level of sharpness. It is obviously sharp, but uh, I think that... I think that I was kind of expecting uh, more, uh, if I may put it like that. Obviously, I mean, it will slice paper, no doubt, but uh, I'm just not feeling that super sharpness that I'm used to. Let's try the other ones. Uh, let's go with the um, RWL34 version here. See how that one performs. Yeah, some paper. Yeah, this is... This is the kind of sharpness that I have come to expect. Much, 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 much better sharpness. I mean, it's not that the other knife wasn't sharp, but this is just, you know, this is what makes it interesting, I think, when you have several of the same uh, model, you can really, you know, yeah, get a feeling of consistency. Let's try the stone pattern version now, shall we? Bring out another piece of paper, Let's see. See where this one places itself. Yeah, this is also sharper than the first one. Not sharper than the second one, but I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely they're all sharp knives, but uh, there is there is some there is some differences in, in sharpness here, uh, most definitely. So this one places this one places third in sharpness. This one places uh, first, and this one places second. Did we get it right now? Yeah, I think so. But that was for the printing paper. So let's uh, let's see how it performs or how they perform slicing um, a newspaper instead. So let's, uh, we're gonna need one page at a time. Let's put this here. And let's begin with, uh, with the smooth version again that performed uh, the least good uh, in uh, regular printing paper cutting. So some old, uh, Nice newspaper. So, some pages of old newspaper uh, may be more difficult than uh, the regular newspaper I go with. But, well, I mean, it's equal for all three knives. So, uh, this is the knife that performed the least good uh, cutting printing paper. So let's see how this one performs. So, um, yeah, not super smooth, I would say, but uh, I mean, still, it does, it does cut, you know, the newspaper, but uh, not really, not really that smooth, uh, to be honest. Then again, this newspaper is more challenging than what I usually uh, use in my uh, sharpness tests. So, I mean, it's it's semi hard mode. This one did a fine job with the printing paper. I hope it will do well here. Otherwise, I picked too hard paper to, to cut this time around. So, yeah, I think this paper is actually little bit challenging. Maybe I should have gone with some some less old newspaper. Because this knife is sharp, I mean it would shave. Dead certain. Okay, so now we are 
Uh, I don't know, maybe it's a question about technique as well. Well, obviously, I mean, this one will slice newspaper a lot better than, um, than the first one. So let's go with the, with the third one now, shall we? Find piece of newspaper here. I mean, it will all slice newspaper, it's just as this one did it the worst, in a sense. But it's still, I mean, still would slice a bit. Did I have any? I didn't have any left. Okay, so, um, I mean, we do have a bunch of confetti here, but yeah, it's easy to sum up that this one. Uh, the smooth handle here did not have the, the typical sharpness. Uh, to the edge that I have come to expect from Maxis, but it will still still slice both paper types. This one had a very nice edge, the kind of edge that I do expect from a Maxis knife. And I think that this one, uh, this one too, had a, a really nice edge. So all in all, I mean the knives are sharp, but this one I might touch up just a tad bit. But overall, they made confetti out of all types of paper, so... Time for some final thoughts and conclusions here. So in this video we took a look at the three available versions of the semi newly released Maxis Raccoon Dog. This one being the Holes version which features a Japanese Tanto style blade in RWL 34 steel. But there are also, like I mentioned, two other versions, one being the stone pattern version, which features the very same, you know, blade design, but with a CPM S90V blade instead. Furthermore, there's also the polished version, or as I like to call it, the fingerprint magnet version. Uh, or did I say polished? It's gonna be, it should be called the smooth version, but I like to prefer to it as the polished version. Anyway, it features the very same blade design as well, and also in CPM S90V. So, let's see. So, two blades in S90V, one blade in RWL34. So, going over uh, these knives, I've come to the conclusion that they are of uh, pretty good, or pretty good, I think they are of great fit and finish. Uh, one of them had a blade that wasn't you know, perfectly centered, whereas the others had perfectly centered blade. All of them have really nice opening and closing action. Uh, none of them had any lock stick or blade play or anything like that. In the sharpness test, I came to the conclusion that all knives were sharp. Uh, these two, if I remember correctly, were sharper than this one that struggled, well, I'm not gonna say that this one was struggling in any way, but it was just less sharp uh, when I cut the different types of, of paper. So, uh, but they're, they're all sharp knives. And I mean, we have come to expect great sharpness, factory edges, from, from Maxis. So, uh, I mean, I am comparing it to uh, their usual standard, I would say. In terms of ergos, I think that this knife is of, it has a great ergos, whether you use it like this in a normal grip or if you want to go with a reverse grip. Uh, lots of room, no sharp edges or anything, it is, yeah, it, it fits my hand nicely. Could have gone with a bit more aggressive jimping and further up the spine, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much to me. The pocket clip is nothing special really, but it will, you know, it will work um, the way you want it to, at least. There is no lanyard hole on this knife, 
or this design. So if you prefer lanyards, that's gonna be a bit tricky. Uh, I reckon that you can switch the pocket clip to either side, uh, should you want to do that, if you're left-handed. Um, so, what more can I say? Yeah, I think it is high quality steels, both RWL and, and CPM S90V. I mean, they're both high premium steels. Uh, and the price is something that I have yet to discuss here in this video. But these knives are actually quite affordable, I would say. I'm not gonna say cheap perhaps, but they are definitely affordable knives. Uh, the price will depend on where you buy them. Uh, or if you are in the US or Europe, etc. But you will find them at, at a very affordable price, especially given the materials and the fit and finish. That is uh, pretty important, I think, uh, when, when discussing this specific model. If you would like something like this knife, but it is even cheaper, then I would recommend you to take a look at uh, Samurai 2. I should make a video of this one in the not too distant future. Uh, but this is also a Japanese style knife. Obviously it's in the name like the Samurai 2.0. So, but it has a bit of a different um, uh, blade profile uh, compared to this one. This being a more compound grind, um, slightly you know thinner or less wide compared to the Samurai 2.0. Both of these are nice knives. This is a frame lock, this is a liner lock. Uh, a bit cheaper, you know, pocket clip. I mean, still functional, but definitely not my, my favorite. Uh, but this one, is, this one is cheap. This one is affordable. Uh, if you, on the other hand, want to go up instead, uh, then you can take a look at uh, this one, the Max Ace Punchy. But it's gonna be difficult to find it. It was uh, made in a, a very limited run, I believe. Uh, but it is a super nice snappy knife, really aggressive, uh, tanto shape there, compound grind, some really nice details, etc. So uh, this is what I would consider the, the top of the line. This is a liner lock, by the way. I would have loved this one to be a frame lock, actually. But not that I've had any you know, issues with liner locks. But yeah, Panshi top of the line, this is somewhere in between. And then the Max A Samurai 2.0 if you want something that is slightly uh, cheaper or well, a lot cheaper even. This one is, I mean, the value for the money for this one is incredible in my opinion. This is a great knife. I love this knife. Uh, both the looks, the feel and the performance. So definitely have to make a, a video of this one. But back to the raccoon dog here. So I had kind of high expectations of this model. Um, do I feel like my expectations were met? Yes, I think they were met given the price. Uh, I would have perhaps preferred this one to be a, a flipper. I mean like not a front flipper, but a, a regular flipper instead. But uh, other than that, I think this is a, a really you know nice design. I, I would have preferred them to not edge etch the company name here on the pocket clip. I think it looks well. I I just don't like it. I mean I, I do like that they did some semi deep you know etching or engraving of sorts. Not engraving, but etching and not just printing the text here because it would have been uh, would have vanished with some use and, and some would say, well, that will solve your problem because then you won't have to worry about the, the branding on the pocket clip. But I guess that not only the etching would, or the text would wear off, but also perhaps the, the color in some sense. But I, I, just don't, I just don't like, you know, the company name on the pocket clip. And I think that they are doing that on, on a lot of their, uh, their folders right now. But all in all, I think that the, the Raccoon Dog here is a very nice knife. Got great ergos, great fit and finish. Um, these two had great level of sharpness. This one had an, well, okay, well, a bit more than okay level of sharpness, I guess, but you can always uh, touch it up yourself. So if you're looking for a affordable knife in high quality materials like titanium and RWL 34 or S90V steel, 
uh, then this could definitely fit the bill. It is a nice knife, uh, most definitely. Which one I prefer the most? Well, the sharpest one, I guess, <laughs> since sharpness is, is a thing. I'm gonna see if I can, um, can get um, um, the blade centering perfect by just adjusting the, the torque screw a little bit. It shouldn't be a, an issue at all. And once again, I was super nitpicky when I mentioned it, but I, I say it the way that I, I see it. But yeah, all in all, I mean, the, the raccoon dog is an, an easy recommendation. Um, and not only because of the, the great price, but in terms of, you know, just, just overall quality. Build quality and materials and level of sharpness. So if you've been on the, on the fence, then you might want to uh, jump over and grab one of these.